The first WCW World War III event took place on November 26, 1995 in the Norfolk Scope in Norfolk, Virginia. 12,000 fans attended the event and an estimated 90,000 fans bought the show on pay-per-view. The main event featured a three-ring 60-man battle royal for the WCW Championship and fans would also get treated to a Ric Flair vs Sting match in the semi-main event spot. The concept of World War 3 started off as an international affair, it's all in the name. The battle royal was to feature superstars from all over the world and along with this, a giant would compete inside each ring. Ron Reese is a huge ninja, Elegante repackaged as the Yeti, and of course there'd also be the giant Paul White. Elegante could not return to WCW in the end and instead Ron Reese became the Yeti and the idea of three giants in each ring was scrapped, but a graphic exists at the start of the show that mentions the three giants, and towards the end of the show they also say that Hulk Hogan was one of the giants. We'll talk more about the inaugural World War 3 Battle Royal a little later on, but let's check out every match on the show and see if it's worth watching again today. This is WCW's World War 3 1995. Mean Gene interviews three of WCW's biggest stars at the start of the show, Randy Savage, Sting and Dark Side Hulk Hogan. The Hulkster had gone absolutely batshit crazy and he thought turning to the Dark Side and swinging a giant sword about would lead to victory over the Dungeon of Doom, but all it did was turn him into a complete dickhead who turned his back on his buddies, including Sting. Hulk says out of all the bad comes something good. The Hulkamaniac stood by Hogan while he went through his little phase and Hogan now realises who his friends are. He takes off his black gear to reveal the classic red and yellow attire. Dark Side Hogan's gear gets put in a self-lighting trash can as Hogan says goodbye to evil. Hulk says he wants to be Sting's friend forever, that's that's really nice. And Sting says aye, no problem. Savage says that he too was wrong for backing up Hulk, so it's all good. The babyfaces are back on track and the boys are back in town. Hogan then pulls out a dirt sheet and he says, these are shit, it's all about what's on the internet in 1995 according to Hogan, and he denies rumours written in the sheets about Macho being heard and the giant getting penciled in to win tonight's battle royal. Out of curiosity, I looked up a few Observer newsletters in 1995 and yes, Dave thought the giant would be the best bet to win the battle royal. He also wrote in the, in the next sentence that the best bet would be Salvage Sting or possibly Luger. So yeah, Dave Meltzer picked four best bets. Thanks Dave. So there you have it, all three of these guys are going to compete in tonight's battle royal, plus Salvage and Sting are featured in singles matches. DDP vs Johnny B. Bad is our opening match. Bad defeated DDP at Halloween Havoc to win the TV title, and not only is the TV title up for grabs in this rematch, but if DDP loses, he'll also lose the Diamond Doll as his manager, and she'll join up with Mr. B. Bad. The two get in the centre ring for our opening match, Ring 1. Dallas smacks Johnny's chest after a clean break and this leads to both men rolling to the outside where Dallas gets thrown into the ring post. Back in the ring, Dallas goes down after a crossbody but he counters with a pin attempt. Bad answers with a Samoan drop and it goes to the mat with a Johnny B. Bad side headlock. The two competitors struggle over a top wrist lock, we see a Mero wrist lock followed by a DDP armbar. Paige pulls the hair to get an advantage so Johnny returns the favour. Paige flies out of the ring after a miss crossbody and Johnny follows Dallas with a plancha. On the outside, DDP hides behind the diamond doll and this leads to Bad getting sucker punched. Johnny gets thrown into the guardrail and back inside the ring, Paige delivers a back suplex and he counters a flying head scissors with a pancake or the diamond clash. DDP looks all shocked at how awesome he is. Kimberly Page, meanwhile, thinks her husband's a complete tool. Johnny tries to counter a kick but he gets taken down with a clothesline. We see a running shoulder charge from Dallas but a second attempt results in Paige smacking the ring post. Johnny dodges a kick and Dallas falls on his back and now Johnny's going to build a comeback. A big right hand gets followed up with an atomic drop, Bad delivers a few lefts followed by a right and the crowd pops when Dallas takes a big clothesline. The Diamond Doll gives Johnny a 10 plus for his comeback and he tries to end it with a sit down powerbomb but Dallas kicks out. Dallas then stops Johnny with a back elbow and a tilt the world side slam. Kimberly's now looking a little worried but Johnny eases her concerns with a flying head scissors. The back and forth action continues with Dallas hitting a gut buster before nailing his opponent with a back elbow. He then goes for a tombstone but this gets countered and Johnny pulls off a tombstone of his own. Dallas then takes the bad mood plancha and Kimberly can't believe how great this match is. 
It then comes to an end when Johnny pulls off a vaulting leg drop, so the diamond doll now belongs to Johnny B. Bad, and Johnny B. Bad retains his TV title. Kimberly seems to be shocked, but she gives Johnny a big old hug inside the ring, and after the match, she tells Mean Jean that she's got mixed emotions. Johnny actually gives her the option to be his manager, so he's not going to make her do anything she doesn't want to do. What a nice guy Marvelous Mark Merrow truly is. The next matchup at World War 3 is a taped fist match, Big Bubba vs Jim Duggan, because taping your fists gives you 200% more punching power. Hacksaw wrecks Bubba before the match gets in the ring and he screams USA as Bubba screams in agony. Inside the ring, Duggan delays way too much when going to use the 2x4 and he ends up showing compassion for Bubba. Bubba tries to take advantage, he gets clotheslined twice and the third clothesline leads to Bubba tumbling out of the ring. The two then fight in the ring furthest to the left hand side of the hard camera and the fans sitting close to that ring pop. You know, the visual of three rings is very unique, but I often wonder what it would be like watching one of these shows from the floor seats. I can't imagine it would have been all that good. We see a great spot when Bubba gets his head stuck between the ring posts, but Hacksaw's elbow drop from the apron to the outside totally misses. He then takes an uppercut from Bubba, and then the match resumes in the center ring with Bubba throwing a few right hands. The ring furthest to the right then gets some use, ring number three, and all we've got here are two dudes just throwing punches for a bit. Bubba then then puts Duggan down with an enziguri, and after another right hand, Bubba decides to wrap more tape around his hand, increasing his punching power to 400%. Duggan withstands the punishment and he performs a big old shoulder block that knocks Bubba out of the ring. The two then go back to the center ring, and Big Bubba's now going to tape Hacksaw to the ropes. Jim takes a few punches to the jaw, it looks like it's lights out for Hacksaw, but then… Uh, yeah, Hacksaw gets freed, they fight on the outside again. Duggan gets the better of Bubba and Hacksaw hits a three point stance clothesline. VK Wall Street then shows up and he's got a chain wrapped around his fist. Duggan whacks him with his 2x4 but Bubba's able to grab that chain. Hacksaw gets clocked and Big Bubba wins this taped fist match via knockout. Absolutely dreadful, I couldn't wait for this match to end, so yeah, you can skip past this one. Did you know on CompuServe you can chat electronically to WCW superstars? That's what Tony Schiavone says, have an electronic chat. Bobby Heenan says he chats electronically all the time. Nature Boy Ric Flair gets interviewed by Mean Gene and he says he's got a style and profile in his match tonight against Sting. Whether you like it or you don't like it, Ric Flair is the best thing going today. In the World War match, Flair's gonna get his hands on Hogan, Savage, Luger and Sting all at the same time and he can't wait until the main event. Next we have a women's tag match, remember when WCW had women's wrestling and it was actually good? Yeah, it didn't last long. Judy Suzuki and Mayumi Ozaki vs Bill Nakano and Akira Hokuto. None of these ladies were signed to WCW but Bischoff wanted to feature Japanese women's wrestling on his shows and it was a good call, these women could go. Nakano and Hokuto wipe Mayumi out at the opening bell and Nakano sends her opponent for a spin afterwards. It's absolute destruction from the heel team as Hokuto gets tagged in and she taunts her opponents by bringing Ozaki to her corner and stretching her arm for a tag. Back in the other corner, Randy Anderson doesn't know what to do when Bull Nakano bites her opponent's hand, and once again the heels taunt their opponents and then they perform a double team move. Nakano absorbs a few shots, and Ozaki even tries a few windmill punches but she gets clocked in the face before Hokuto tags back in. Ozaki then fights back with a springboard forearm and a DDT, Cutie Suzuki finally gets in the match and Akira goes down after a dropkick. Suzuki applies a half Boston crab, Nakano tries to break it up but Mayumi comes back in and Nakano ends up in a half crab too, the crowd pops for this. Judy Suzuki then targets the left knee and she locks in another half crab, and Bull Nakano doesn't like what she's saying. She breaks the hold, she tags in. Ozaki thinks she's doing her partner a favor by holding Bull Nakano in place for a dropkick, but Nakano dodges it and we see a power bomb. Nakano then goes up for a moonsault, she misses her target, so the babyface team deliver multiple double food stomps before trying a double suplex. Bull Nakano counters and she suplexes both of her opponents at the same time. Hakoto then tags in, but she misses a top rope splash. Nakano saves her partner from taking a double suplex and Hakoto is able to perform a crossbody. Suzuki and Ozaki then perform tandem hurricane ranas and tandem top rope clotheslines, but the match continues on, there's no pinfalls. Mayumi 
Miyazaki pulls off a half Nelson suplex and Hokuto replies with a German suplex that looked a little dangerous. All four then get inside the ropes and the babyfaces go down after a top rope dropkick. Hokuto then performs a senton from the top rope to the outside and if all this wasn't enough, Nakano and Hokuto pull off a doomsday device. We then see Nakano's top rope leg drop and Nakano and Hokuto win the match. It was fun but it was also a little bit messy. Tag rules were completely thrown out the window with tags happening inside the ropes instead of on the apron. But Bill Nakano, predictably, was the star of the show. Jimmy Hart says we could be looking at the next WCW World Heavyweight Champion right here, Lex Luger. He then leaves Luger hanging and man that's pretty rough. It's bad enough if this happens with a few buddies but fuck me, sold out crowd, pay per view audience, Luger must have felt like a right dickhead here. Jimmy Hart guys, absolute savage. Lex has no fucking idea what camera he should be talking to right now as he says the total package is the past, present and future of wrestling. Lex is gonna break the macho man in a hundred little pieces in their singles match later tonight and Savage won't make it to the World War 3 Battle Royale. When all said and done, World War 3 will end with Lex Luger standing as the World Heavyweight Champion. The next match is for the US title, champion Kensuke Sasaki vs Chris Benoit of the Four Horsemen. Benoit shows the US champ the symbol of excellence after winning the opening lockup because you know, horseman business, but Sasaki brings Benoit to the corner for a few hard chops and Benoit backs up when he realizes Sasaki's being serious tonight. Another lockup leads to Benoit applying a waist lock and a drop to a hold from Chris leads to an armbar. A front chancery gets countered with a suplex and the two go into a test of strength that sees Benoit bridging out and performing a top wrist lock takedown. It remains submission based with Benoit performing a cross arm choke and Sasaki says that's enough. He gets out and Chris takes a few clubbing blows to the back and a body slam puts the challenger on the mat. Sasaki applies a devastating chin lock and he performs a press slam when the two men get back to their feet. Chris gets a chance to dive through the ropes though and when the match resumes in the ring the crippler goes right back to the mat with a head scissor submission. Sonny Ono talks about a daily made with Bobby Heenan and he mentions something happening at Starcade concerning Japanese superstars. Nothing's really given away here and not a lot was given away on Nitro either. The story of New Japan vs WCW at Starcade really unfolded on WCWB and C shows. Chris performs two German suplexes but he goes down after a clothesline. He then counters a tombstone with a tombstone of his own, a spot we saw in the Johnny B Bad match, and Chris then lands his diving headbutt. Sasaki kicks out at two. We see a Super Frankensteiner from Benoit but again it only gets two. Sasaki pulls off his tornado bomb after grabbing Benoit's leg. Chris dodges the step over armbar but the match ends with a northern lights bomb from Kensuke Sasaki. Not a bad match but nothing special either. I'm enjoying these kind of matches though because performers such as Sasaki and Nakano disappear from WCW and they're all but a memory now in the current reliving the war timeline. So I'm enjoying going back and seeing other wrestlers perform inside a WCW ring. Take that away though and the match is pretty standard. Taskmaster and the Giant then get interviewed and you know exactly what to expect here. Sullivan calls Giant the uncrowned champion and the smart choice to win this thing tonight is the Dungeon of Doom's big man. Even Dave Meltzer said the smart money was on the Giant. So those idiots Hulk Hogan, Sting and Savage need to watch out and beware of the Giant in World War 3. The most fun thing to do here is to just watch the Giant and see all the faces he pulls as Sullivan and Jimmy talk a load of old bollocks. The Giant ends it by saying roses are red, violet are blue, Hulk Hogan sucks balls and Macho Man does too. We've got Lex Luger vs Randy Savage next and check out this match graphic, man that's fucking phenomenal isn't it? Randy Savage told everyone that Luger had an agenda when joining WCW and Luger wasn't one of the boys. The total package proved that when he helped the Dungeon of Doom take out Hulk Hogan at Halloween Havoc and Luger also attacked Macho on Nitro. So we've got a match tonight at World War 3 to settle the score, only it wouldn't get settled because these two would have a ton more matches in WCW as the years went on. There were some worries that Macho Man was suffering from an arm injury but Macho says he's a million percent tonight and that means Lex Luger's in trouble. Macho makes his way down to the ring, Lex makes his entrance along with Jimmy Hart and honestly what we've got here feels like a Nitro match. I've watched these two wrestle each other so many times now and I can almost tell what's gonna happen move after move but this time they really quickened their match up and the match doesn't get a chance to settle down at all. 
Macho gets vicious at the opening bell and Luger doesn't get a chance to defend himself. It's all Randy Savage as Luger gets punched, kicked, choked at the ropes, choked in the corner. It's not a good start for Lex at all. Luger tries a clothesline but Macho ducks it and it's Lex who takes that clothesline. Macho applies a Boston Crab but Lex makes it to the ropes. The match then goes to the outside where Macho gets his head smashed in the guardrail. He takes a kick to the ribs and he sells it like a gunshot wound. And back inside the ring, Macho performs a body slam before going up for the big elbow. Jimmy Hart gets on the apron but Macho hits his finish anyway. The referee's too busy with Jimmy, so Macho tries to throw Lex into the mouth of the south but Jimmy moves out of the way. More attacks at the guardrail but this time Luger's able to hurt Savage by throwing him into the ring apron. Savage then finds himself in the torture rack and Luger almost gets counted out, so he breaks the move and he throws Savage back in the ring. Lex then applies an arm bar, remember that injury, and the referee calls for the bell. Lex Luger wins in under 5.5 minutes. Lex won't let go of the hold. Sting has to come down and Luger finally lets go after Sting has a word with him. So even though Luger's a bit of a dick, he will still listen to his best friend. This match wasn't good. If you want to see Lex vs Randy Savage, there are better options available. Sting vs Ric Flair takes place next. Flair set the Stinger up at Halloween Havoc to reunite the four horsemen and Sting got his ass kicked by Anderson, Pillman and the Nature Boy. Again, it's all about revenge in this one and just like Macho vs Luger, you don't have to look too hard to find other Sting vs Flair matches that are better than this one but let's give it a watch. It's already guaranteed to be better than Macho vs Luger anyway. Sting's already been out in the arena twice tonight so his pop's already been wasted. In saying that though, he still gets a great ovation on his way to the ring. Flair talks a whole lot of shit to the icon and Sting goes to bite Nature's finger off. Careful there Stinger, god knows where that finger's been. Flair dashes the ring too after taking a right hand and he decides to style and profile while waiting for Sting to come after him. We see a gorilla press slam from Sting and the fans at this ring again are hyped to see some action up close and personal. A thumb to the eye gives Flair a little more confidence. We see some more of those knife edge chops and some more styling and profiling from Slick Rick but Sting explodes out of the corner with a clothesline and the nature boy takes a ton of punches in the corner followed by a hip toss and a drop kick. The nature boy runs away to ring number 3 and the crowd over on the right side of the arena cheer like crazy. We then see Colonel Robert Parker and Sensational Sherry at the entranceway. No idea why they're here but they are. Sting absorbs a few chops in the corner and the nature boy gets floored with a big right hand and Slick Rick finds himself on the outside again. He thinks about heading to the locker room but he comes back in for a test of strength. Sting gets the best of flair but Rick turns it around with a shoulder strike. He tries to slam the stinger to the mat by grabbing Sting's hair but Sting kips up twice, Sting absorbs more chops and flair goes down after another press slam. So far this one's been pretty fun, not gonna lie. Flair tries to head back to ring number 1 but the stinger tries a stinger splash on the nature boy on the outside and sting smashes the guardrail. Nick Patrick takes a chair away from Flair so the nature boy decides to rake sting in the eyes instead. As long as Flair fights dirty, he's all good. Inside the center ring, Flair delivers another chop but Sting's had enough and he grabs Rick by the throat. Flair doesn't panic, he sees this as an opportunity to smash the little Stinger with a low blow and Sting's gonna roll around on the mat for a bit while dealing with what's likely to be a whole lot of pain. Cherry and Parker are now watching the match from Mean Gene's interview area and they watch on as Flair performs his knee drop. Slick Rick looks like he's about to attack the Stinger's sweet little ass but he changes his mind and he goes for Sting's leg and now it's only a matter of time time before we see the figure 4. Flair keeps the pressure on with shots to the leg and knee and he breaks up the offense with more nation. It goes to the outside again where Flair stays in control and the two men go back to ring 3. Flair performs a chop block, he claws at Sting's face. He then performs a back suplex and now it's time for the figure 4. Bobby Heenan says the party's over as Sting struggles while locked in Flair's finish. Flair pounds on Sting's leg while applying more pressure but he makes the mistake of slapping Sting across the face and that's something you just don't do. Sting screams at the nature boy before reversing the pressure. The two get back to their feet, Sting reverses a hip toss with a backslide but he only gets a two count. 
Flair takes it out on Nick Patrick and Patrick shoves Rick to the mat. Without a doubt, this is the loudest the Norfolk scope have been all night. Flair chops Sting and he turns his back to gloat a little but Sting's just pissed off now. Another chop doesn't work so Flair runs away to ring 1 and the match is gonna end in ring 1. Another gorilla press slam from Sting gets followed up with a few clotheslines. Sting lands a few punches in the corner, he no sells an inverted atomic drop. Rick gets set up on the top rope and we see a superplex from the man called called Sting, and there's the Scorpion Deathlock. Ric Flair submits and yeah, this was fun. Not the best Sting vs Flair match as mentioned earlier, but it's still Sting vs Flair, and it wasn't bad at all, I actually enjoyed this one. At this point, these two knew each other so well and they knew what to do without communicating. It's very appealing to just watch these two hit all their spots without hesitation. Their chemistry was insanely good at this point of their long storied rivalry. This is not Clash of the Champions 1 by any stretch, but it's still a fun match, so I'd say check it out. The first ever World War 3 Battle Royals up next, and if you watched any of my previous World War videos you'd know that talking about these matches with any sort of detail is almost impossible. 3 rings, 60 guys, the matches presented on TV as 3 mini screens and guys get eliminated really quickly. It's fun covering Royal Rumble matches because you can talk about each entrant and follow their progress in the Rumble match even when things get busy. World War 3, on the other hand, is nothing but absolute chaos until the last few moments of the match. Match. WCW would constantly change the rules of a World War match and they'd also not follow their own rules and let the guys do whatever they wanted. Check out World War 3 1997 as an example. But in this World War match, everyone had to jump into ring number 1 once there were only 10 men left in rings 2 and 3 respectively, and to be fair, they did follow this rule. The world title's on the line here too. The title was vacated when WCW weren't happy with how Jimmy Hart screwed Hulk Hogan at Halloween Havoc. Jimmy wrote in the match contract that Hogan could lose the belt if he got disqualified, and seeing as Jimmy was the one who caused that disqualification, WCW said, nah mate, that belt's getting vacated. Hogan says before the match he's focused on that big nasty giant but he's not losing sight of the world title either. Hogan talked to Sting and Macho and everyone understands it's every man for himself if it comes down to WCW's three most popular baby faces. Hulk says in one night he has a chance to prove that Hulkamania is the greatest power in the universe and he says the maniacs are running wild, the crowd boos this by the way. So what you gonna do when the power of Hulk Hogan, the Stinger, the Macho Man and the fucking goodness in WCW? WCW run wild on you brother. Seriously, the goodness in WCW, that should have been a faction. Mean Gene says the crowd loves the Hulkster as they continue to boo, brilliant. Alright, let's look at a few competitors in the first World War 3 match as they make their way down to the rings. Arn Anderson leads the way, uh, oh shit Alex Wright, he's gonna win. Who else we got here, uh, Squire Dave Taylor, there's Sting and Jumpin' Joey Mags. Disco Inferno's here, uh, there's Ming, Lex Luger looks like he'd rather be anywhere else. Paul Orndorff's here, Chris Kenyon's here, hard work Bobby Walker, uh, there's the Yeti, fucking great. Here's the Zodiac, he was absolute money wasn't he? Brian Pillman's in the match, Sergeant Craig Pittman follows Pillman, Mr JL's here, Shit Steiner, Mike Winner, Booker T's in the World War 3 match, and the last man out is Hulk Hogan. Keep an eye on Steve Regal during Michael Buffer's announcements at the beginning of the match, he looks like he's having a panic attack and he has no idea how he ended up in this match, he's such a good performer. Buffer says let's get ready to rumble, the fireworks go off and here we go, Bobby Heenan says it's like the prison riot in Etika. We go to the three screens and each ring has its own commentary team, Shivani and Heenan at ring 1 in the centre, ring 2's got Eric Bischoff and Dusty Rhodes, and ring 3's got Larry Sabisco and Chris Cruz. The boys team up in ring 3 to get the Yeti eliminated so that's that experiment truly over and done with. In ring 2 the giant chokes the Sarge while Sarge stands on the ropes, the Yeti's still hanging out outside ring 3 and he's attacking random people who get eliminated, and the crowd get excited when they notice Sting, Flair, Anderson and Hogan are all on the outside but they all went through the middle or bottom ropes. The guys in the truck just give up and we see ring 1 on 2 screens as Big Bubba and the Taskmaster and the Shark try to eliminate Hulk Hogan. The Zodiac's getting the better of the Macho Man in Ring 3, and I was just about to skip ahead to the end, but then Alex Wright gets shown in Ring 2 and he's trying to eliminate Dave Taylor. Taylor counters by wrapping Alex's arm around the top rope, and it's a bit worrying when this is what 
you find exciting in a WCW pay-per-view main event. Let's just skip forward to everyone getting into ring one. Trust me, you don't miss anything here. So we've got Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Lex Luger, Eddie Guerrero, Arn Anderson, Randy Savage, Taskmaster, Sting and Steve Regal all still in the match, along with a few others. The Taskmaster and one-man gang try to eliminate Hogan and that crazy bastard Craig Pittman's pulling off arm bars in the middle of a battle royal. Jim Duggan gets some revenge by eliminating Big Bubba by using a taped fist, and Bubba then decides to eliminate Duggan from the outside as Scott Armstrong gets stretchered out of the arena, don't know what happened there. Disco Inferno gets eliminated, there goes Dave Taylor, Hogan eliminates Jerry Sags and Booker T, and Luke, Booker clearly has the opportunity to get back in the ring but he says nah fuck that, this match sucks. Hogan then eliminates Kevin Sullivan and over in ring number 2, Randy Savage beats the shit out of Lex Luger. They both come back to ring 1 as it's announced that 21 men are left, make that 19 men because Johnny B. Bad and DDP are now out of the World War 3 match. Let's skip ahead again, we have got Sting, Flair, Anderson, Luger, Giant, Macho, Hogan and the one man gang. The Stinger hits double A with a Stinger splash, the Giant hits the Macho Man with a choke slam, and the crowd pops when Sting catapults Anderson into Ric Flair. Flair falls falls over the top rope and Hogan eliminates the enforcer afterwards. Sting and Luger then work together and they hit the giant with multiple clotheslines. They then try to throw giant over the top rope but Hogan rushes over and he eliminates all three men. Jan pulls Hogan out of the ring and the Hulkster fights the big man. And then, completely out of nowhere, it's announced that Randy Savage just won World War 3 and Randy's the new heavyweight champion. Randy eliminated one man gang and the referee assumed that Hogan went over the top rope. Hogan complains about the outcome and he tries to explain that he went under the ring, but Randy Anderson's decision is final. Randy Savage is the winner and Randy Savage is the world heavyweight champion. Hogan's still complaining, Mean Gene gets in the ring and he too explains to Anderson that Hogan didn't get eliminated, but Michael Buffer then announces that Savage is the new champion and it's made official. The crowd boos the outcome, I don't think they care about Savage winning the belt, they're more upset about the shitty finish. Savage says it is what it is. Hogan's his friend and he didn't see if Hogan got eliminated, but Hogan just needs to shut the fuck up and accept the outcome. Hogan gets the fans to back him up and Hogan says there's a dark cloud over this victory. Savage didn't go over the top rope, but neither did Hulk Hogan. Tomorrow night on Nitro, the tape will get replayed so Macho can see what happened. Hogan congratulates Savage, but he also says he deserves a shot at the belt. The two shake hands, the fans start filing out of the arena and yeah, I didn't like the finish either. Hogan loses but he doesn't really lose, it's the same old shit really. Take the finish out of the equation and it was still a bad main event. I stated before that I really liked the idea of World War 3 matches and reading about these matches without ever seeing one made me so curious. When you actually sit down though to watch one of these, you realise within the first few minutes that you're watching a whole load of nothing. A bad match, a bad finish and a bad way to end World War 3. Sting vs Flair was definitely the match of the night for me and Johnny B Bad vs DDP wasn't bad either. Low points of the pay per view included the Duggan match, the Savage vs Luger match and the Battle Royal itself. Sasaki and Bull Nakano's matches were ok, nothing overly exciting, so unfortunately World War 3 1995 doesn't come recommended. It's one of those events where you can pick a better match for each performer, it's like yeah this is ok but you need to watch this match over here instead. And it's a shame too because there's some really big names at this show but it's just not all that enjoyable really. If you plan on watching this then check out the opener and check out Sting vs Flair, the rest take it or leave it. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. This is the first of 6 pay per view reviews that are getting uploaded to the channel over the next 2 weeks. Remember there's no reliving the war this week and next because I'm having a break, but hopefully you stick around for more pay per views including Royal Rumble 1996, Uncensored 1996, In Your House Mind Games and Bash at the Beach 1996. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you're doing well and take care.